Good morning and welcome to you church. A <laughs> couple of announcements before we start. Uh, since this is not live uh, yet, it should be later on today, we should be able to go live. Uh, since it's not live, I am going to say your parts of the liturgy with you so it's not as awkward as it would be otherwise. And uh, later on, uh, we should put up announcements uh, that we are going to start morning and evening prayer as long as everybody's stuck at home. Uh, so we would podcast those in the morning and in the evening. And then as far as the Lord's Supper is concerned, we can do that on an individual basis or a by family basis. Uh, we can group together with friends and come in a group, uh, not more than nine or 10 people uh, to the church to do the Lord's Supper, or uh, I can come to your home. Uh, whatever you'd like to do, let me know and uh, we can discuss it. And as always uh, during this time, please uh, contact me on my cell phone immediately for any kind of pastoral concern whatsoever. But call me on the phone, do not text or email. I may not necessarily answer those quickly. So if you need to call me immediately, please call my cell phone number, which is on the screen. Okay, let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We pray, O oh God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that we turn from our wickedness and live. Graciously behold your people who plead to you and spare us. Withdraw the scourge of your wrath and be moved in mercy to turn away this pestilence from us. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My eyes are ever toward the Lord. For he will pluck my feet out of the net. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and with our spirit. We pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 42. For a long time I have held my peace, I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant, I will lay waste mountains and hills, and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools. 
and I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. They are turned back and utterly put to shame, who trust in carved idols, who say to metal images, you are our gods. Hear, you deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger, who I send? Who is blind as my dedicated one, or blind as the servant of the Lord? He sees many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. The Lord was pleased for his righteousness' sake, to magnify his law and make it glorious. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. We ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves, and we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. See that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. Brothers, pray for us. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. I put you under oath before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. As Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be families, famines, and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. 
Let the one who is on the housetop not go down to take what is in his house, and let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. And alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation such as has not been seen from the beginning of the world until now, no, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. So if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. If they say, look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to thee, O Christ. We join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Wasn't the whole point of the internet age supposed to be shrinking the world, connecting us to one another more and better than ever before? The technology heralds blew their horns and announced the dawn of the global village. Now that we've been in more or less self-imposed exile for a week or so, how connected are you feeling? The COVID-19 pandemic has led state and government officials across the country to essentially ground everyone to their rooms. Even some families are practicing social distancing inside their own homes. In talking to people about the present situation, two main things have come to everyone's thoughts. Number one, how do we earn a living, take care of our neighbor and worship in isolation? And number two, is the end of days maybe here? Even for card-carrying introverts, this social distancing is devastating and lonely without physical interaction with other people face to face. As time goes on, it may start to feel like the new normal, but for most of us, it will at the very least begin to make us very uncomfortable, if not anxious and depressed. But we need not fear. God who provides all good things for his children gives us ways to practice fellowship even in dark times such as this. And we also have various figures in scripture to emulate as our example. To address this isolation situation, we need look no further than the example of St. Paul. He wrote about 28% of the New Testament. Four of those letters, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon, he wrote while incarcerated in various prison cells. He was physically distanced from these congregations and it was challenging for him to visit them and while in prison, impossible. Yet Paul invested in the community at a distance to bring them the word of God, all without the benefit of cell phones, email, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter. One of the hallmarks of community, particularly the communion of saints, is having a source of mutual encouragement, as Paul wrote. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Let us continue to pray for one another and encourage one another as you all do so well. 
especially in these difficult and uncertain times. Make sure you're on your church's prayer chain call list. Keep in touch with your fellow members by phone or text or however you like to communicate. Read your Bibles. In the coming days, we hope to set up some type of daily devotion or Bible study to spend a few minutes in prayer and in the Word as a community. God has given us remarkable technological tools. The time has come to put them to work for His glory and for our own benefit. There is the usual amount of false information, fake news, and that sort of thing in the media. It's probably a consequence of the fact that anyone can become a media outlet these days. It can sometimes be difficult to distill the vapor of truth from the vapor of the blogosphere. This is also nothing new. Our Lord and Savior addressed this very thing in our gospel for this morning. Jesus said, So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, let him drop what he is doing and flee, for then there will be great tribulation, such as not been seen from the beginning of the world until now, no, and never will be. Then if anyone says to you, look, there is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead you astray, and if possible, even lead the elect astray. So let's take stock of our end of the world checklist. War and tyranny? Check. Rebellion and civil unrest? Check. Poverty and scarcity? Check. Pestilence and death? Check. Four out of four horsemen of the apocalypse accounted for. One summer fishing for perch beyond the break wall on Lake Michigan near Burnham Harbor in downtown Chicago began to get dark eerie dark, creepy, the hairs on your arms standing on end scary. And it wasn't the creepy light making them stand up. The fishing lines started to dance around, floating just above the water where they had previously been slack. Further out in the lake, the oncoming darkness of a heavy front was moving in like a brick wall. Everything began to have static as if it had just been yanked out of the clothes dryer. The signs were all there. They had been ignored for almost too long, almost too late. But by now it was painfully obvious. A severe lightning storm was inbound. In fact, it was already there. It was past time to flee for shore. Should we be worried that we are not paying attention to the sign of an impending lightning strike? No. The thing about that checklist from the book of Revelation is that all of the items on the list have been happening since we got kicked out of Eden, and they will continue to happen until Jesus returns. That's why Jesus said, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. We don't need to worry about the end, because we cannot prevent the end from coming that's out of our control, whether Jesus comes back while you're watching this video or a million years from now. God remains in power. God will use even this pestilence to work his will on earth. God didn't create the virus. He didn't send the virus. He is not punishing us for our sins. That is not how God operates under the new covenant in Christ. What God does do, however, is to use the terrible and the horrific, the things that happen in the world like that because of sin, and he turns them to work something astonishing. God used the horror of crucifixion to work the salvation of every repentant sinner in history through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and he will use this virus too. While we are turned in on ourselves, sheltering in place, we're allowed to be creative in how we work for the benefit of our neighbors, in our church community, in our geographical community. When faced with a virus run amok, we tend to think about our own mortality. If you knew today was your last day on earth, how would you spend it? Praying for those lost friends and family that have fallen away from the church? Burying old grudges? 
encouraging those you would be leaving behind to trust in Jesus, confident that you will soon be in his company, free from the pain and trials of this mortal life. At times like this, we are reminded that it is foolish to wait. Jesus said, but concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. We don't know when the end is coming for sure. When it does, it will be too late to think about it. Why don't we start right now? Do you have anything better to do right now today? We don't have the perfect foreknowledge that God has. We do not know when our last day is coming, and we certainly do not know when the end of days will arrive. So when are we supposed to make these preparations that scripture tells us to make? It's so simple, it's become a cliche. We live each day as if it is our last. Sometimes, we just need to be reminded of how fragile life is to put things in perspective. Larry Brilliant, the renowned epidemiologist who helped develop the vaccine for smallpox, had this to say when interviewed about the COVID-19 outbreak. When asked if he is worried about contracting the virus, this man of science replied, I'm in the age group that has a one in seven mortality rate if I get it. If you're not worried, you're not paying attention, but I'm not scared. I firmly believe that the steps we're taking will slow down the spread. This is not a zombie apocalypse. It's not a mass extinction event. But then Dr. Brilliant, isn't that a great name? Dr. Brilliant later added something remarkable when asked if there was a bright side to all of this and something we just don't expect to hear from men of science in this time of biased media came from his mouth. Is there a bright side? Well, I'm a scientist, but I'm also a person of faith, and I can't ever look at something without asking the question of, isn't there a higher power that in some way will help us to be the best version of ourselves that we could be? I thought we would see the equivalent of empty streets in the civic arena, Still, the amount of civic engagement is greater than I've ever seen, but I'm seeing young kids, millennials, who are volunteering to go take groceries to people who are homebound, elderly. I'm seeing an incredible influx of nurses, heroic nurses, who are coming and working many more hours than they worked before. Doctors who fearlessly go into the hospital to work. I've never seen the kind of volunteerism I'm seeing. For believers, our eternal life in Christ is assured. Everything else until his return is just marking time, but fulfilling the great commission according to our gifts. What will we do in thanksgiving for receiving this wonderful gift? What better version of ourselves can we present to our communities during this outbreak? Supporting one another as Christ supports us, we are equipped for this challenge. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace which passes understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray. Blessed Lord, you give sight to the blind, you open the ears of the deaf, and you make the lame to walk. Hear the prayers of your people on behalf of all people as they have need. In the darkness of sin and its death, we cry to you, O Lord. Open our ears by your word, our minds by your spirit, and our hearts by your grace, that we may know and be thankful for all the blessings you have given to us in Christ our Lord, especially the gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Strengthen us in faith that we may serve you with all our body, mind, soul, and strength. Bidden by your word, we pray to you, O Lord, on behalf of your church and all your people scattered and isolated. Give to us good pastors and servants of your word who will serve us faithfully and boldly even in chaotic times. Keep them safe, comfort them and their families, and raise up many more servants for full-time church work. Defended by your grace, we ask you, O Lord, to provide us with good and faithful leaders who will preserve the precious gift of liberty and protect the lives of our citizens. Give them special wisdom 
and help them to work in harmony in the midst of this pandemic. Bless the members of our armed forces and protect them as they defend us. Grant your blessing to all emergency and medical workers who continue to come to our aid in times of great need. Enjoying the riches of your grace, we ask you, O Lord, to give us generous hearts that we may share what you have provided with those in need and work for the common good of all. Give us patience in our seclusion and comfort the lonely. Grant relief to the unemployed, the underemployed, the homeless, and all their families. Knowing your healing will and gifts, we pray you, O Lord, to spare us from all calamity by pestilence, scarcity, and fear. Remember the sick in their afflictions, calm those troubled in mind, and keep steadfast the dying. Hear us especially for our homebound members, and also be with Dolores as she continues to battle cancer, and be with Deborah Zeman, wife of Pastor Zeman, as she battles cancer. And especially, Lord, all those we now name in our hearts. Show us your gracious will, O Lord, and sustain those who are afflicted in body or mind until that day when you will bestow upon us new bodies fit for the eternal life you have prepared for us in Christ. Mindful of your promise, we ask you, O Lord, to comfort those who grieve and to build up those who mourn with hope for the resurrection. Remembering the faithful who have died in Christ, we pray you to bring us at last to be with them in your nearer presence. Looking forward to that day when we shall join in the marriage supper of the Lamb in his kingdom without end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, asking you to grant our prayers not for our sake, but for the sake of him alone. Teach our hearts to be content with your will and to trust that you will answer us with what is best for us and at the right time for our need. So do we pray giving testimony of our confidence in your gracious favor in Christ by answering with one voice and praying as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. God bless the rest of your day and your week. Thank you.